Hi, welcome. Let's say you decide to value a company. The first thing you need is raw data, right? So what I'd like to talk about in this webcast is the process for collecting raw data. Much of what I'm going to say is obvious and you might know it already. So if you know it already, you can skip this webcast, but there's no harm repeating stuff even if you know it already, just in case you don't. So you pick a company to value. I'll pick a company for you. Let's say I've, or you want, um, I, I want to value Tesla. Well, the place I'm going to start, obviously, are Tesla's financials. Where am I going to, going to get those numbers? I actually find the most useful place to start is a company's own website. So in the case of Tesla, I went into Tesla's website. And somewhere on the website, if you click around, and for some companies it's more difficult than others, you'll find an investment relations section. And in, this, in that section, you should be able to find annual reports and SEC filings. So here, for instance, are all the filings that Tesla has made with the SEC. Clearly, there are lots of filings. There are insider trading filings and other filings. But let's say I want only annual filings. I can click on that. And the neat thing, at least for the Tesla website, is I can download it in lots of different formats. That's pretty simple, right? So that's the first place. Try that out for your company. And for most companies, that should work, okay? even for non-U.S. companies. If I have a U.S. company, the second stop I almost always make is in the SEC website. It's a pretty extensive site. So here's what I'd suggest. When you open up the site, which and the, the address is up there, click on company filings. So the company I'm obviously looking for is Tesla. I'm going to say search. And the reason I did that is so that you can see a list pops up. Now you say, which one is, is right? For some companies, the list is going to be extensive. You might see 50 listings, and you might have to do a few, clicking around a few before you find the one that's yours. But in this case, it's pretty obvious which one is mine. It's Tesla Motors. If I click on that, it shows you all the filings that Tesla has made with the SEC. And obviously, it makes lots of filings. I'm not interested in most of them. So let's say I wanted just the 10K. I can click 10K. I'm sorry. The 10K. And you're going to find... Oops, the 10k and you can find just the 10k filings let me click on the documents you'll see another set of choices the SEC is big about giving you lots of choices if I click on the HTM file you'll see it open up online now I'll tell you my preferences when I see this online I have a tough time reading this online so I generally tend to save it as a PDF file the advantage of saving it as a PDF file is first I'm not lugging around 150 pages of paper with me whenever I want to look at something. The second is PDF files are searchable. I can search for a specific item, rental commitments, lease commitments, by using that search box. So at this stage in the process, I should have the annual report in the 10K. I should add here, though, that especially in the last couple of years, I've seen several services pop up that make this process smoother. What process? The process of getting this data on filings with the SEC and annual reports. I'll give you one of my favorites. It's called SEC Live. It's a fairly young company, but they've done an incredible job of making this process transparent and pretty simple to use. I'm going to log in and for you to log in obviously you've got to register but what you will see is a listing of companies that I've used SEC Live for okay? and it'll give you the 10k, the 10q, the 8k. You're saying what's the big deal? I could have got this off the SEC website. Here's the neat thing about SEC Live. Now if you look at a typical 10k it might run 150-200 pages and you might use only 10 or 12 pages of that. In fact, I'll do a different webcast on using a 10K where you're going to see how little of a 10K I actually use in evaluation, which means I'm going through a lot of pages I'm not interested in. What SEC Live does <coughs> that's neat is it keeps track of what you pull out of 10K. So let's say you consistently pull off the income statement, the balance sheet, the statement of cash flows, maybe the options outstanding and lease commitments. It remembers that. And when you, when you look up the 10K for a new company, then you can train it to just pull the information you pulled before. That's pretty neat, right? So give it a try. I think it's, I mean, there are, there are other sites like this that try to do this, but they're designed to take that data that's out there, that, that those hundreds of pages, and kind of compress them, process them so that they're useful in valuation. So the first stop, let's review where we are. Do, you need to get information on the company. Don't pull that in those numbers of Yahoo Finance or Google Finance. Start with the company's own website. Go to the SEC website if it's a U.S. company. Or try to use one of these services that kind of makes this interaction a little easier. So let's say you've got that information. 
Your second stop, let's assume, is to get macroeconomic data, interest rates, exchange rates. Getting the current numbers for interest rates, exchange rates, and other macroeconomic data is usually trivial. You can go to the Wall Street Journal website or Barron's or any of those or Google Finance, and you should be able to pull up those numbers for the most recent period. But let's say you want T-bond rates for the last 25 years or the U.S. yen exchange rate for the last 30 years. That should be a little more difficult, right? I'm going to give you a link. That's a gold mine. It's a Federal Reserve website. And here's the best part of it. It's free. It's called FRED. It's, uh, it's uh, maintained in St. Louis, but you see the link up there. Make sure you bookmark this link because they're not lying when they say they have 148,000 international time series. They have pretty much every macroeconomic data set in, in a known to map. So if you click on categories, for instance, you can see all the different categories. Let's assume I want interest rates. Look at the choices I have. I can get commercial paper rates and T-bond rates, T-bill rates. Let's say I want the 10-year T-bond rate going back in time. They give you a choice. Do you want the daily rate, the weekly rate, the monthly rate? Let's say I want the monthly rate. Here, there's the data. If I click on download data, they let me download it directly into an Excel spreadsheet. Here's the neatest part of, about Fred, though. There's an app that they have that you can add to your iPad or iPhone. Now, the iPad's actually better because you can see the data better, but you can download the dire data directly onto your iPad. Here's the other neat thing. Fred actually has an Excel add-on, which if you install on your, com on your computer into your Excel as an add-in, you can then pull the macroeconomic data directly from any Excel spreadsheet without ever visiting the Fred website. So if you get a chance, try the site out. As I said, it's free, you have nothing to lose, and you're gonna find a lot more macroeconomic data than you ever thought you would. So let's see where we are. You have the data on your company, the financials for your company, you have macroeconomic data. The last step in the process, let's assume, is that you want to get data on other companies in the sector. In my case, because I was valuing Tesla, for instance, I wanted data on other automobile companies. There's a long way to do this. You can go get the data on each individual company by going to the SEC website and downloading the data for that company. But two problems. One is, if you have lots of companies, this is going to be difficult to do. And second, you need to know the names of every company before you even look for the data. If you're a Stern MBA student, you have a bonus, which is you're given access to a great database called Capital IQ. You've got to register for it and, and make sure that you do that because it's um, no, once you register, you can log into the site. And here's what it looks like when you log in. Right? So that's the login site. You've got to enter your information, not mine. And this is the page that opens up. The, the, the link I almost always click on is a screening link. Now let me review what I'm trying to do. I'm going to try to find all publicly traded automobile companies globally. Okay? So I'm going to click on company screening and you're going to see a page with a plethora of choices. You don't even know where to start, but stay focused. I want publicly traded automobile companies, right? So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click on company type and I'm going to pick public company and add that criteria. And you see the, see the spinning ball? It comes back and tells you how many companies passed the screen. 60,394 public companies. Scary, right? So go to industry classifications. You're looking for automobile companies. I'll make a confession. When I first looked at this list, I wasn't sure where the automobile companies were. But after clicking around a few times, I did find it eventually under consumer discretionary. I clicked on the plus again, and it said auto components and auto companies, which means I have a choice. I can pick all automobile companies, including component companies, or just automobile companies. I was interested just in automobile companies. So I added that criteria. The ball spins around. 180 companies came through that screen. Now I can add other screens. For instance, if I want just North American companies, I can go in and say US and Canada and add that criteria. And 59 companies come through. If I want even more, I can go in and add criteria for market cap. I can look only for companies with a market cap greater than 5 billion or 10 billion. Remember though, each additional criterion you add will narrow your sample. And one of the neat things you can do in Capital IQ is if you add a screen and it makes your sample too small, you can go back and adjust that screen. So if you set your market cap to be 10 billion and only five companies come through, you can go in and make it 1 billion and maybe 25 companies will come through. So in this case, I'm going to be, I'm going to stop you because I want, let's say just, in, in fact, let's assume I want geographical. Geographically, I want global automobile companies, not just US and Canada. If I click on the 
on that X, it'll make that screen disappear. So I'm going to look for all automobile companies globally that are publicly traded. But before I click on the view results, I'm going to customize display. I have to decide what data I want to pull out about these companies. So if you look at the choices, Capital IQ offers you lots of data you can pull off on individual companies. I'm going to stay focused though. Let's assume that I want data on market cap. Okay? So let's say I want the latest market cap. I'm going to add that column. So you can see it pop up. So now my data set is going to include the most recent market cap for every company. Let's take total revenues. Now one of the things about revenues and any accounting item is Capital IQ gives you a choice. It says, do you want the LTM? You're saying, what's LTM? That's the last 12 months. Or do you want the latest annual? I'm going to stay with the last 12 months. Incidentally, I can ask for information on the last 10 years if I wanted to. But in this case, I'm going to again stay with the last year and I want the latest 12 months. I add that column. I can ask for EBITDA, again, last 12, the, and I'm going to add that column. Let's say I'm happy with that. Now, normally I'd be looking for 15 or 20 line items, but I'm not going to bore you by adding all the line items. But Capital IQ has data not only on accounting information, it has market information. Things like betas and standard deviations are in there. It has option information. You look for it, it's probably in there. So you might have to do a little searching, a little, little research on your own to decide which data items you want. But when you're ready, click on View Results. Okay. Now it says capital IQ is, is, so what you see in this page then is the 190 companies that went through your screens are 100 plus companies and the data that you asked for, okay? The X, wherever you see that just dash, it means that, was, that data was not available. It's kind of tough to scan this online, but the neat thing about capital IQ is you look at the top, it says export. If you click on go into Excel, it will then download that data set onto your computer as an Excel spreadsheet. How much easier can it get? So what you will then find is, um, so if I click download here, it'll download the data right onto my website. So it's, it's so right now it's in my download folder. It's a company screening report. I now have the data on all automobile companies on my computer to do whatever I want in Excel. I can compare them, analyze them, assess them, look at the averages. Now this is this is the this is the best way to get data if you have access to capital iq you say what if i don't have access to capital iq or any other database of of this type obviously these databases are pretty expensive if you're an individual investor or somebody who does not have access to this data you can't pay for it it's too expensive you can then try some shortcuts and they're not as rich as capital iq here's one you can try yahoo finance or google finance and they both offer you a choice of downloading data for sectors so for every company you can get data on the sector you're constrained by what they put into the sector you can't take companies out or add them in you're also constrained by what data they have which is obviously not as rich as capital iq you can also go to my website um, and if you go to my website and, uh, and of course you know the you know how to get there demodern.com and it's not even opening, you know, there's, there's something wrong with the website. But if you go to my website, you'll actually see down the left-hand column a, a, a link called Updated Data. Click on it, and you will see industry averages for the automobile industry, for instance, for pretty much every big accounting or market item, you know, including multiples and financial numbers, working capital ratios, operating margins for by sector. You're saying, but I want it for individual companies? Go towards the top of the updated data page. And in the uh, towards the top of the updated data page, you'll actually see an Excel spreadsheet. And it's a pretty big Excel spreadsheet of publicly traded companies with individual company data. Again, it's definitely not as rich as Capital IQ, but it costs nothing. So for, for, for sector-wide data, if you have access to a Capital IQ or a FactSet or a Bloomberg terminal, not the Bloomberg website, but a Bloomberg terminal, take advantage of those data sets to download the data. If you don't have access to that kind of database, then try something online, Google Finance, Yahoo Finance, or try my website. But at the end of this process, before you even start looking at the valuation models you're going to build, you should have the financial statements for your company, annual reports, 10Qs, um, 10Ks, whatever financial data they have. You should have macroeconomic data that you need, and you should have company data on individual companies in the sector. Okay? 
and um, it, it's 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 you no know, you might have to come back looking for more data but at least you know where to go to get the data now so give it a shot pick any company that you're interested in even if it's not the company you're going to value just pick a company try to see if you can get the data because it shouldn't take that much time and um, I'm glad you you were able to listen in on this webcast thank you so much